Hey, I'm Adrian Corral, and today I'm going to show you how I made this simple, complex 3D renderer in a console. This is C Sharp console, and that is pretty cool. So I made this a while back ago, but I also remastered it today, uh, over two days, to make it a lot easier to add entities and rotate, transform them, and or, and transform them. And you can also load models or custom or custom models like you, that you write in code. So these are the square. The first thing I did was make an entity class. This is where I'm going to, going to store all my information. So I just put a name on because I'm probably going to use the name later. I don't really need it at the moment since I never used it as an ID, but I plan to use it as a ID. And then I also had vertices. I also, I also had the indices, and then I had a transform, which I just made a file that has a position, rotation, and scale. There are two methods to call. So here is the one where you manually enter the vertices and triangles, and then there's a one that has a obj file path. This you insert a string to the file. Here we have models and ico, so this will be the ico icosahedron, which you see in the bottom right, right here, and. Also the cylinder, which you saw at the top left area. Then, it just loads them in. This is my update. It's the wall true. That's not really good. But we reset the array of screen points. These are the letters on the screen. These are the characters. For each entity and entities, we will add a new transform vertices so we can rotate and apply the transformations in the transform class position, rotation, and scale. Now we transform all of the vertices. If we go down here, apply transform is we do the scaling, we get a scaling vector, we apply scaling, then we apply the rotation, which we go down here. Basically, just copy and pasting math, which has already been done and don't need to redo. And this converts the degrees to radians, because I want my rotation to use degrees, but the matrices use uh, radians. And then we also we apply the rotation. Then finally, we apply translation of the position, and we return the final vertices. So we do that for every vertice in an object. Then, project them, so we project this transformation, puts it from model space to world space, and projection puts it from a world space to view space, or I like to call it screen space, which down here is just a uh, project vertices. So we get the camera matrix, matrix, matrix C, and that holds a bunch of information as the camera matrix, which is 4x4 four four identity. We also store the FOB and the neon file clip plane, and this is for ornographic, because we also have a ornographic camera protection. So I have a transform for the camera, so we can move it around, and then we get the view matrix, which this applies the transform to the camera matrix. So project vertices, uh, we transform, so this does some math that I don't remember. Hold up, How... there we go. Uh... Position in matrix, I don't know what this does. I can't find it. I think it just multiplies it, or it does something to transform the camera space vertices. So we convert the world position to camera space, and we determine if it's perspective or not. So let's do the not first. This is ornographic, and we get our boxes, our size of our camera, based on the aspect ratio and the camera size, which we, over here, we have it labeled as 10 currently, but I think I changed it over here. 
all the way up in my settings I changed camera size to 2. But that doesn't matter in the non -orth orthographic view. Then we do a bunch of math that I can't really explain right now but it just works. Then we return the screen chords of that vertice. And this is a throwaway variable. I might need it, might not need it later. Now, with perspective, we skip the vertices from behind the camera, because Ornographic doesn't really care about that. But it, it, it does some weird math. I'm not best at explaining math, but that's pretty cool. Then we convert, convert it to screen coordinates, uh, X and a Y. Why? Uh, why am I so bad at this? Now that we're done projecting the vertices, we, we will generate a wireframe. So this will use a Bowsam Bowsam line algorithm. So we get we make sure it has triangles. It's all triangles. We just make sure it's divisible by three and throw an exception without. Then we get of the indices or the vertices by the indices in the in the triangle array and then it will call the calculate line with depth depth from point 0.1 to point 0.2 we don't really need depth I don't know why I kept that name I was trying to do depth for like a depth buffer but we don't need that since the console is monocolor so it doesn't really matter and down here, our calculate line with depth is a lot of math. Uh, I'll just show you all. Copy if it if you want. It's it's super simple, but also super complicated. Probably one of the first times I used like these tuples. But well, it was a tuple. I changed it. So I have a screen class. This is the interesting bit. So we basically, it's basically a super complicated version of for X and of for Y, which is basically this, but it's much faster and more efficient, and we double it just so the pixels are more square. To add a new object, I'm just going to copy and paste this. We don't need the rotation, and I'm pretty sure it's monkey. Because it's the blend of Monkey Susan. We'll go two to the right. And we'll go four. Back. And this will be Entities 4. That's pretty much as simple as it is to add a new object. There's the monkey. And then, to go into Perspective, perspective you just turn this to False. And that's an ornographic view. All all these shapes in, are the same size. And I think I think this is smaller because it's both white. No, I'm curious why this is so much bigger. Do I have scale? I do have scale on the cube. It's double. It should be. Double. 